Hickok 45 here, chapter two with a beautiful rifle. One of my favorites, as you know, the Sharps, the model 1874. Yeah, this is the uh, Montana Rough Rider version of it. Chapter two, I'll link to the first video, but I thought we'd shoot this baby again and uh, have a little fun with it, right? I haven't shot it too much lately. And I brought out some black powder cartridges. These are 500 grains. I wonder what one of those will do to know, anything. We'll find out, right? See if I can hit anything with, <laughs> with a couple of them. All right. You know what? Let's just fire the first shot at uh, that old ammo can. We turn sideways there and see if 500 grains of lead will go through that. <laughs> I think it did. I don't think that's a problem. I'll get my brass. Look at that smoke. Oh man, a lot of it. Look at that white smoke from black powder. So, yeah, I did not let it get hardened up and dry. So, uh, let's shoot some more. Let's try a, a 405 grain bullet, okay? Kind of a standard load back in the day and see what we get out of it. You know what we ought to do right away? I don't really remember where to hold for the gong, but I'm gonna take a shot at it. We're 405 grains of pure lead. All right, there's that pleasant ring. Let's put another one on it, you know what, one, two. It is a chapter two, and uh, I started to say chapter twos are mostly for fun, but really every video is for fun, and all shooting is for fun, right? So let's slam one against him again. Oh, I... Uh, might not have held high enough. What do y'all think? Could you tell whether my sight picture was right? Let's try it again. 405 grains, I'll hold a little higher. That was it, you were right, you were right. Didn't hold high enough. Oh yeah, I see that smoke. Oh boy. Now, I pointed this out before, competitors will uh, after every shot, I won't do it every shot. I mean, I can do it again, so I'm not having clog up troubles. <laughs> but they will run a patch uh, with whatever their favorite lubricant is. Some of them is Ballastol, but uh, uh, like mine, and just run a patch or two through it. Again, for new shooters, you know, that's what you get with just a couple of shots, you know, three shots where I fired black powder. Uh, really, after one shot, it would look just like that, okay? I'll get those picked up too. I don't want to trash up my place. Okay, it's funny. I would comment sometimes at Woods Walks. No, oh, you leave all that trash around, you guys. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's what I do. What am I doing? Oh, I'll just have that ready for the next time. Okay. Uh, you know what I could do? A little, you don't mind if I experiment a little bit? It is a chapter two. I'll link to the first video on this so you can learn everything about this beautiful rifle. Okay. Shallow Sharps, Montana Rough Rider. I think I'm gonna go ahead and shoot a 500 grain bullet, which I think will uh, drop a little more at 80 yards. So I'm gonna hold on top of it. See if we can tell any difference in the sound, if it hits it. <laughs> I think I did. Of course you have the factor of where it hit it, right? Makes a big difference. Let's do that again with something. Let's shoot something close by with 500 grains of lead. Oh, like that uh, propane tank down there. <laughs> Kill team. Kill team. Yep, it's black powder. So, you do know too that that 500 grain bullet, uh, I have loaded this exact bullet before. Uh, that bullet, goes down to you know about in, in that area so it's it's not just up here it's just <laughs> a lot of about half it's not like an iceberg i'd say it's about 50 50 because i have some of those so a lot of it's down here and it's a big chunk big chunk and of course 405 grains is nothing to sneeze at i think with it probably more of it's uh underground inside the case yeah so you got a lot of uh, lead there let's shoot a four and five grain something all right, I'll throw one at the 
Uh, well, there's a ram over there in front of that wall, if you can see it. I don't see it really, really clearly, but I'll throw one at it. Uh, I think I shot low because I'll tell you why. It wasn't that I was holding in the wrong place. It was it got off on me. I was just about ready, but it, I wasn't up where I wanted to be. I might still miss it, but that thing has such a light trigger when you uh, set it. All right, let me be smarter this time. Under better control. Yeah, that's where I wanted to hold. Wow. Okay, thought it didn't knock it over. <laughs> 405 grains of lead and uh if you've ever shot black powder before as i've pointed out many times you really can't see uh, where, where you hit until the smoke clears <laughs> you just can't now you might think this is wow what a nuisance how annoying is that you have to run a cleaning patch through there wow i don't do that with my ar-15 after every few shots now this is a different proposition this is a single shot you gotta love it the romance of it it's just uh, a different sort of animal and uh it would it might be fine through the entire video i don't know how many rounds we'll shoot uh, but it's really good to keep the black powder soft they do that in matches with uh, they've got these tubes uh gosh i don't i never did have one i never did really do that but they stick it in the end here and there's a tube and in it uh like a, a clear surgical tube sort of thing and they blow in it out into the barrel between shots and what that does is it moistens just your breath the moisture it moistens the powder keeps it soft okay it keeps from hardening up i've told you all that story at least once about a friend of mine and I shooting a, a lever gun with black powder cartridges on the range one day in the sun he laid his down for a little while I mean to tell you, it started throwing bullets everywhere. It was hilarious almost. And uh, black powder residue had caked up in his barrel so badly, like cement. Uh, I'm going to try the red plate on the left, but I'm not going to make it a habit because I probably will struggle with this, this round. I don't know. Oh, good. Got him. I just don't feel, I mean, the, the firearm is plenty accurate, of course. I'm just not as comfortable with the round. I don't shoot a lot of them, but uh, it's not all that far away. So beautiful rifle. Oh, boy. And, you know, one thing about this, shooting black powder, of course, uh, <laughs> brings on all sorts of cleaning, doesn't it? Uh, you, if you've shot muzzle loaders, you know what I'm talking about. But, you know, with one of these, it's really not that bad. It, it's, most of it's just out in the barrel. You push it out with several, uh, you know, wet patches and, you know, it's gone. Uh, so, but I'll take apart the whole mechanism and, and clean that too, just to be, to be sure, because firing like this lasts hundreds of years, thousands of years, you know, maybe millions of years. I don't know. Let's throw another 500 grain. Want to? Let me put, why do I keep taking my ears off? Just want to be able to hear what y'all have to say. All right. You know, I think we're probably okay <laughs> to do something like shoot that hog. If I were out hog hunting, for example, with this thing, and there was a hog there, whatever that is, 25, 30 yards, I'd probably shoot it. <laughs> Got him right where I wanted to, especially for AR-500 steel, right? Yeah, sweet, sweet. Let me try one of these 405 grain bullets on the uh, on that turkey over there. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? There he is. Hang in there. Okay. <laughs> Pop! <laughs> I'll tell you, it's a really rewarding sound. Uh, because it's such a nice rifle and it would be a little bit of a crime if I couldn't hit anything with it, you know. Uh, still a very nice rifle, even if I couldn't hit that, that paper target there, which I'll shoot, okay. Uh, just a, a thing of beauty. 
and uh, there'd be something wrong with the rifle if I couldn't hit the at least easy targets, or there'd be something wrong with me, right? Nothing could ever be wrong with me, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a 500, how's this for overkill? Let's put a 500 grain bullet on that paper target bullseye area. All right, now this is what this rifle is designed for, shooting at this range. <laughs> yeah, I bet it went through it. I bet all 500 grains of lead went right through that thing. Good old Montana Rough Rider. If I was a Rough Rider in Montana, I'd be happy to own this thing. I, I really would. It's got a falling block. Uh, you know, shallow sharps in Big Timber, Montana. I'll link to that first video, which I really talked a lot, gave you uh, all the information that I know about this and the sharps in general and the history of them. Uh, and uh, they're, they're, they're beautiful. If you're an old guy like me and you want one, you better get out ordering it because I, I don't know, last I heard it was about five year wait time on them uh, from Shiloh Sharps at least. There's there's other another company, C Sharps, I think, that makes really high quality ones. And uh, I think their wait time is just as, as long. Uh, so, you know, I, luckily they had this one in stock several years back uh, and I just bought it. Uh, I don't know if someone ordered it and canceled or what the deal was. I think that happens occasionally. And uh, fortunately they had that in stock because uh, it's rare, it's rare. And I'm too old to be waiting five or ten years on a fireman, right? So I'll shoot a couple more before I make you leave. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll shoot a couple of jugs or something here. Let's do that. Black powder. I forgot my belt. I can't believe it. I'm so embarrassed. I don't have my cartridge belt. I'm not a real cowboy. Not a real rough rider. Uh, I'm just a city slicker. Let's shoot this jug right here. Let's shoot through it. See if we hit that plate. <laughs> I think we did. <laughs> oh yeah. You reckon it'll move a bowling pin? 405 grains? Let's pop one over here. Right in the middle of it. <laughs> One thing about these rifles is you know you're pretty safe once you fired. You're like a muzzle loader. Uh, you're probably not going to do much rapid fire activity with it. It's just that simple. So you see how they work. You know, the falling block comes down. Let me get another round here. Now give me an excuse to shoot one more time, okay? <laughs> and uh, you take the torpedo, you put it right there, and it's like they made it that way. And it just goes right in. Look at that. Then you bring up the block behind it, and you see how sturdy that is. It's not cox, but you know it really is a thick block locks in behind that. And yeah, this is a sneaky way to get another shot in, wasn't it? Like on a blue Kentucky two-liter. Boom! <laughs> and that's enough. I'll let you go. Big old heavy gun but uh, a masterpiece really out of Big Timber, Montana. Uh, I'm not a representative for the company. Like I say, there are, uh, there are lots of people who make great uh, Sharps rifles. You know, Lyman makes one at least. Uh, like Peter Soli and probably Chiappa and a lot of the Italian gun makers. In this country, you got C Sharps and uh, and Shiloh Sharps, and there's probably some others I'm not aware of. Uh, I think, uh, correct me if I'm if I'm wrong, or just add what what you know that I don't. It, Shiloh Sharps and C Sharps, I think, are two of the premier companies, at least U.S. made for sure. And there might be somebody else I'm not aware of, or maybe a probably a custom gun maker somewhere. I don't know if we don't consider Shiloh and C Sharps custom. But uh, anyway, they're uh, wonderful firearms. They're not cheap but I love them. Uh, there's something about them uh, that's just hard to explain until you've held it and you have fired it. And I know if you watch Quigley Down Under, you kind of get the fever for something like this. Uh, when you pick one up and load it and fire it, that fever increases exponentially. It really does. <laughs> then you end up on a range, you end up with one in your possession 
Farragut, black powder maybe even. So anyway, I'll let you go. Glad you came out for a chapter two, some more fun with this. You'll see it again. Life is good. Oh, fire. It's a long walk from where I had to shoot that. Oh man. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Since you're here, I wanna let you know about our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall, talongungrips.com. Check out everything they have over there. You can get lots of different grips, the stick on grip textures for your handguns and rifle grips. So go check them out. Also, Ballastall, they're a firearms lubricant or anything else you might need lubricating. Uh, it's water soluble and non toxic. Been using it on the compound and cleaning all of our guns. It's a cleaner and a lube for over 10 years. So, Ballastall, Talon Grips, definitely check both of those companies out. And also, while you're on the internet, don't forget to go to Hickok45.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45, Twitter, Hickok45, Instagram, The Real Hickok45. And also, I have an Instagram page where I post behind the scenes stuff and different things like that. John, J O H N underscore H I C K O K four five on Instagram. And uh, the next thing you have to do is watch more videos.